Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I appreciate you being with me. Here we are on Thursday, and uh, tomorrow, don't forget, we'll be looking at, once again, uh, another response to Dr. Kenneth Gentry's book, Have We Missed the Second Coming? By the way, thanks so much for all the kind remarks about that review and reputation that we're doing of Dr. Gentry's work. I, I appreciate the fact that you appreciate what we're doing there. All right, we are continuing our, uh, our examination of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, that the resurrection would be when sin, the sting of death, would be overcome. I have pointed out repeatedly, that means to deal with sin is to deal with death. Now, what's absolutely amazing to me is that I have had person after person after person say, yes, Don, Paul is dealing there with physical death. But in Romans chapter 5 and Romans chapter 6, Romans 6, 23 especially, when Paul says the wages of sin is death, there he's talking about spiritual death. So they're talking about two different things. No, they're both talking about the death of Adam. As in Adam, all men die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Wherefore, as by one man, i.e. Adam, sin entered the world and death through sin. Romans 5, 12. Paul never says, now I want you to know uh, that I'm focusing on this or I'm fo focusing on that. Now, does he have to use a given specific word, term, or phrase that you and I would like for him to? No. We have to learn to exegete Scripture based upon Hebraic thought, not on journalistic rules, artificial rules that you and I might establish. And you know, I, I've had people tell me, well, Paul nowhere uses the term spiritual death. Now, come Monday, I'm going to spend some time on the reality of spiritual death. But just the other day, I'll give a little intro here, just the other day, I had one individual tell me that, well, the idea of spiritual alienation is right, separation is biblical, but the term spiritual death is not found in the Bible, therefore that is a false doctrine. Now, like I said, come Monday, I'm going to be examining that doctrine, that claim. Because look, if, if there is no such thing, biblically, as spiritual alienation, spiritual death, then I'll just simply say right up front, my entire argument that I've been making is false. Because it is my position it is what I believe to be the biblical position that when God said to Adam and Eve, in the day you eat, you will surely die, he was not talking about biological death. He was talking of, of the fact that that very day they would be cast out of the garden, they would be spiritually alienated from him, they would be spiritually separated from him. They would spiritually die. So if it could be proven that there is no such thing as spiritual death, then yes, my position is false. I freely admit that. But I want to tell you what. When people stand up and say there is no such thing as spiritual death, based upon the fact that the specific term spiritual death is not found in the Bible? Listen to me very carefully, folks. This is an absolutely horrid hermeneutic. That is, that is imposing journalistic demands on the biblical writers that are absolutely artificial. We have no right to say, sitting here 2,000 years removed and more, 
from the biblical authors who wrote in a different culture, in a different milieu than you and I do, and to say, well, you know, because the writer doesn't use a given specific term that I think he ought to have used, therefore he couldn't be talking about doctrine X, Y, or Z. What right do we have to impose that kind of journalistic demand? We don't. And yet, just the other day, on Facebook, I was told emphatically, well, the idea of spiritual separation is in the Bible. The idea of alienation is a biblical term. But the Bible never uses the term spiritual death, therefore the doctrine is false. You know, if we took that approach, if we, if we took the approach that because a specific word or term or phrase is missing from, a, from any given text that a given doctrine is not true, then we would eliminate eschatology, basically. Now, let me illustrate that very, very quickly. Got to go on. In my debate with Dr. Joel McDermott in 2012, a book of which is available on my website, I urge you to get a copy of that, I argued from Isaiah 25 and 1 Corinthians 15. Paul said that the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 would be when Isaiah 25 verse 8 would be fulfilled. I demonstrated from the text of Isaiah 25 very carefully, very exegetically, very logically, that the resurrection that Isaiah predicted would be at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Dr. Joel McDermott got up and he said, well, Don made a great point, you know, great presentation, but I don't see the term final resurrection in Isaiah 25. Therefore, there's no way to know that Isaiah was talking about the final resurrection. Well, I got up and pointed out in response the term final resurrection is not found in 1 Corinthians 15. The term final resurrection is not found in, Re in Revelation chapter 20. The term final resurrection is not found in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's not found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Oh, but wait, Dr. McDermott believes that all of those passages refer to the, quote, final resurrection. He was appealing to just as the person on Facebook did the other day to an absolutely flawed, absolutely fatally flawed, corrupt hermeneutic. Let me say again, we must read Scripture not through the modern eyes of expecting certain things journalistically that we have no right to impose on the ancient writers. The, he the Hebrew writers, the writers of the Bible, absolutely did not believe that because a given word, term, or phrase was missing in a context, that that meant the doctrine was not there. Let me say again, such an idea is foreign to Scripture. It is illogical. It is a corrupt hermeneutic. Now, I wanted to take the time today to share with you the importance of proper hermeneutic so that when we come to these New Testament passages and they do not contain certain word terms or phrases that, that we automatically jump up and say, well, you know, Preston says that Romans 5 is about spiritual death. Oh, but I don't, I, I don't see that term. Well, guess what? Let me turn that around. I don't see the term physical resurrection anywhere in the Bible. Do you catch the power of that? Those who say, I don't see the term spiritual death in the Bible, therefore that doctrine is not there. I do not find the term physical resurrection in the Bible. Will, will those same people accept their hermeneutic? No, they will not. So, with that presented, all right, I want to thank you so much for joining me on today's morning musings. Let me suggest, please, that, where'd it go? Ah, must have, must have mailed it off. Okay, my book <laughs> on Daniel chapter 12, 
the resurrection of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. Yes, I've, done it. I've got a discussion of hermeneutic in there and how to properly interpret Scripture without resorting to these false hermeneutics that says, oh, a given text is missing given words, therefore a doctrine cannot be there. Let me encourage you to go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, order the book, The Resurrection of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. Be sure to send me a note that says you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. Once again, thank you so very, very much for joining me on today's Morning Musing. Don't forget, tomorrow we have another video in refutation and response to Dr. Uh, Kenneth Gentry's book, Have We Missed the Second Coming? We will see you there on the flip side.